Welcome back to Outpatient Physical Therapy Considerations for Post-Acute COVID-19. This is the sixth and final part, Post-Acute Physical Therapy at Boston Hope. This presentation is part of the Post-Acute COVID-19 Exercise and Rehabilitation, or PACER, project. During this COVID-19 pandemic, I had the opportunity and experience of working at the Boston Hope Medical Center to provide physical therapy services to patients recovering from COVID-19. These patients had been hospitalized for COVID-19 and are recovering. This is a field hospital located and it was constructed in the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center in South Boston. It was created as a thousand bed medical center serving post-acute patients with COVID-19 who were unable to isolate after discharge from the acute care hospital. And it also houses unsheltered patients with COVID-19 not requiring hospitalization in an acute care facility. This medical center is a collaboration between the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the City of Boston, Partners Healthcare for which I work, and Boston Healthcare for the Homeless. Boston Hope Medical Center opened and took its first patients on Friday, April 10th, 2020. It is staffed by Boston area clinical providers, physicians from the Massachusetts Medical Association, various medical and nursing schools, the Army Reserve Medical Command, and the Department of Defense. There are over 500 clinical staff working there, and from a rehab perspective, there are 45 physical therapists, eight occupational therapists, two speech-language pathologists, and six rehab aides. Rehab staff come from Spalding Rehab Hospital, Brigham and Women's Hospital, and Mass General Hospital. Admission criteria for Boston Hope includes being referred from another healthcare facility, meaning no walk-ins. There must be anticipation of clinical improvement, low acuity with an oxygen saturation of at least 88%, and being on less than or equal to two liters per minute of oxygen flow at rest. Boston Hope is for patients who would ordinarily be discharged home but cannot safely or effectively self-quarantine due to living with other family members or high-risk family members. Admission criteria also includes patients at higher risk for COVID-19 complications who require monitoring but don't necessarily need hospitalization patients that need medical and or rehab for recovery that cannot be met at home, and they must have the ability to pass basic cognitive tests and have decision-making capacity. In addition to excellent medical care, Boston Hope was set up with amenities for all levels of patient activity. There is a wide variety of functional levels among the patients at Boston Hope. Some can walk only short distances with an assistive device with a wheelchair follow and assist for carrying oxygen, while others have completely weaned off oxygen and are exercising aerobically several times a day. Boston Hope has a rehab gym with several pieces of equipment such as bikes, treadmills, arm cycles, stairs, and weights. A 400-foot track was created for walking. There are several exercise groups during the day run by wellness coordinators consisting of walking and dance activities. There are meditation groups, recreational activities and games such as cornhole tournaments, television and internet cafe, and a chapel. Almost all patients referred to Boston Hope receive a physical therapy referral, and most are kept on caseload. The average age of patients continuing with physical therapy is 59, about 65% are male, 35% female. The average time of symptom onset to their presentation to the hospital emergency room is two to six days. Their acute care hospital length of stay averages four to six days. Their Boston Hope length of stay can be anywhere from six to 21 days, with some patients staying up to a month. And the total patients treated to date are 401. Here are some common patient comorbidities and past medical history diagnoses that we've seen with our patients at Boston Hope. Hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, asthma, obesity. These first five are commonly seen and have been associated with more severe COVID-19 disease. Vitamin D deficiency, chronic kidney disease, liver disease, traumatic brain injury, and depression. We've seen substance use disorder, CVA or stroke, lung cancer, seizure disorder, gout, 
peripheral arterial disease, coronary artery disease, couple patients with chronic heart failure, and then some young patients who are otherwise healthy. Most of our physical therapy patients have presented to the emergency room with common symptoms of COVID-19 and vary from cough to shortness of breath, fever, chills, sore throat, headache, body aches, loss of, loss of smell or taste, diarrhea, pleuritic chest pain, weakness, and syncope. Many of our patients at Boston Hope went through an acute care course consisting of chest x-ray findings of bilateral hazy opacities indicating pneumonia and or inflammation or overt multifocal pneumonia. Many patients participated in COVID-19 therapy trials such as with cerilumab, siltuximab, and tocilizumab, which are the interleukin-6 blockers. One patient participated in a trial for hydroxychloroquine azithromycin combination, and a novel therapy of canakinumab was used in one trial. Some interventions and complications that occurred for many of these patients was having oxygen therapy up to six liters per minute, mechanical ventilation in some, with the longest being 15 days, many patients underwent proning, inhaled nitric oxide trials, some had bacterial pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, or femoral DVT. During our patient stay at Boston Hope, many patients continued to have their lab values monitored, and several labs remained elevated even after the acute care phase, such as the D-dimer, ferritin, fibrinogen, lactate dehydrogenase, C-reactive protein, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and liver enzymes. Many of these lab values indicate ongoing inflammation. Some patients' labs remained elevated for many days, whereas other patients' labs tended to trend downward over time. Whether the lab remained elevated or trended down did not have any consistent correlation with their clinical status. In the majority of patients admitted to Boston Hope, by the time of admission, lung sounds were largely normal. Some patients continued to have crackles and others continued to have decreased breath sounds. Some of the post-discharge follow-up was for patients to have a COVID-19 test as an outpatient if they were still positive at discharge, a liver panel test because the liver enzymes continued to be elevated, so it was advised to follow as an outpatient, and some patients were referred for a cardiology consult. Some common clinical findings in our patients post-COVID-19 are findings that may also occur in outpatient physical therapy. Many of these patients may have ongoing pulmonary and cardiovascular impairments well over a month after hospital discharge. We have seen this frequently at Boston Hope with our patients there. Many have continued hypoxemia or low blood oxygen and low oxygen saturation and have a continued supplemental oxygen requirement even after acute care discharge. Many patients have restrictive and shallow breathing patterns, likely due to the restrictive nature of COVID-19 pneumonia, but also due to bed rest, immobility, weakness, and fatigue. Tachycardia is common with a resting heart rate over 100, rising to 130 to 140 beats per minute with ambulation of shorter distances even under 100 feet. Some patients have even rose into the 150s. Hypotension is common with a systolic blood pressure of less than 100 at rest and sometimes with activity. We've also seen frequent episodes of orthostatic hypotension with a systolic blood pressure decrease of at least 20 or a diastolic blood pressure decrease of at least 10 upon supine to sit or within three minutes after sit to stand. This can be symptomatic or asymptomatic, so it's very important for us to continue to monitor with each position. And of course, there is fatigue and weakness that is ongoing due to illness, immobility, muscle atrophy, volume depletion, and malnutrition. Since many patients at Boston Hope continue to have an oxygen requirement, a large part of physical therapy involves oxygen titration, where we titrate the oxygen up or down at rest and with activity to maintain a safe oxygen saturation with a goal of weaning the patient completely off supplemental oxygen. We also help them perform deep breathing exercises such as diaphragmatic breathing with verbal or tactile cues to the abdomen or the diaphragm region or the lateral costal region as well for deeper respiration. And we also help with education on incentive spirometry. We try to decrease the risk and severity of hypotension by encouraging hydration throughout the day, but especially in the morning. We increase the duration the patient spends in upright positions rather than laying in bed despite fatigue. 
and we encourage slower position changes to allow the cardiovascular system to adapt more easily. We also work on functional mobility training, walking, stairs, giving assistive devices when needed, working on balance and different ADLs and tasks. A lot of patients with higher functional levels really enjoy cardiovascular and aerobic conditioning, which we do, and we have a lot of equipment in our rehab gym. And of course, many patients enjoy strength training. Discharge criteria from Boston Hope includes being hemodynamically stable seven days after the onset of disease, afebrile for three days, have a stable airway, breathing, and circulation with an oxygen saturation of at least 94% on room air. They must be able to perform normal activities of daily living and have adequate mobility. And there are many case managers and social workers to help coordinate home care and VNA if needed. We also make referrals to outpatient physical therapy clinics for ongoing physical therapy. COVID-19 status, a patient must test negative twice, at least 24 hours apart, to be discharged back to either home with vulnerable populations or their family, or if they are discharging back to a facility where they live among other people. A patient may remain positive for COVID-19 upon discharge, but they must be able to isolate themselves for at least a month and retest their COVID status as an outpatient. As you can see, we have many words of inspiration around Boston Hope cheering on our patients. Boston Hope admitted its last patient on Tuesday, May 26, and will remain open until the last patient is discharged. I hope this PACER series, focusing on outpatient physical therapy, has been helpful in providing the knowledge and tools needed to confidently treat our patients who are recovering from COVID-19. Thank you very much for this opportunity.